when you are in a state of gratitude, you cannot be in a state of fear. They just, you know, it doesn't work, two of them together. And so fear is the sympathetic state of the nervous system, right? Where things are breaking down because the body thinks it's got to be run for its life. So it's like really only focusing on raise your respiration, raise the heart rate and send blood to the big muscles. Um, so what that you can't heal in that state. So I was just, when I was trying to heal myself, it was all about, how do I get in that healing state as much as possible? So having feelings of gratitude is, is one way to do that. So welcome to the wake up with gratitude podcast, where we share new and different ways to practice gratitude that you might not have thought of before. Our guests come from many different and diverse backgrounds. And the one thing they all have in common is a passion for gratitude. I'm Julie Boye, a gratitude and gut health expert. And I love showing you different ways to practice gratitude that you might not have thought of before. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Today, I'm sharing an interview I did with Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. She is an incredible woman that I can't wait to introduce you to. We met a few months ago along our book writing journey, and I just love her attitude around gratitude, the way that she lives. She brings a lot of joy to the podcast, so I know you're going to have fun listening to her. And just to make it even more exciting, we are talking to each other from complete opposite ends of Canada. She's out in Newfoundland. I'm over here on Vancouver Island, and it doesn't even feel like we're more than a few miles apart. Something that's really powerful about Jane's story is that she talks about leaving her 30-year career to follow her soul's calling. And I love how gratitude has been an integral part of Jane's healing journey. By the way, did you catch the last bonus episode of the podcast? I created something just for you, a sunrise gratitude meditation that you can download using your podcast app. Not only do I share this meditation with you, but I recorded sounds from the ocean at my favorite place to watch the sunrise, Piper's Lagoon, and included the sounds of the ocean as I take you through a sunrise gratitude meditation. The meditation is only about seven minutes long, and it's something you can do at any time of the day when you need a little moment to check back in and bring yourself back to that healing energy of gratitude. So if you missed it, just go back one episode on your podcast app to download the Sunrise Gratitude Meditation. One more thing to share with you, Jane also has a podcast. It's called Wellness by Design, and she invited me to be a guest. So take a look at Wellness by Design podcast on your favorite app and stay tuned for the episode where I get to be the guest and Jane is the interviewer. Okay, friends, let's get right into this interview with Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Wake Up With Gratitude podcast. I'm your host, Julie Boye. And today I'm welcoming my good friend, Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. Hi, Jane. Hello, Julie. So nice to see you today. Oh, I am super excited for this. Uh, before I give you the formal introduction of Jane, we actually met through a program called Authorpreneur that we're both in, and we just hit it off right away. We have become book proposal partners. We are cold dipping on opposite ends of Canada because she is dipping in Newfoundland and I am dipping off the coast of Vancouver. So we just had this great connection and Jane is just an incredible person. I'm so happy to have her on the podcast. Now, Jane blends leading edge science and ancient spiritual practices to help people release chronic pain using the mind, body, and breath so they can become empowered creators of their own health. Her personal experience reversing crippling rheumatoid arthritis using natural solutions, inspired her to leave a 30-year engineering career and become a functional medicine certified health coach, certified yoga teacher, and wellness educator. She's the host of the Wellness by Design podcast and has a fantastic membership group called Wonderful Fine by Design. Jane, I love starting the podcast by hearing your story. So 
there's a lot of things that you could share with us. So tell us just some of the bits of your story that, you know, our Wake Up With Gratitude podcast audience uh, might resonate with. Yeah, I mean, becoming a health coach from being an engineer is like, what? How could I? They're so different. But actually, it all comes together perfectly. Uh, talk about gratitude, right? I'm grateful for all of my background and experience and everything that brought me here. So it was rheumatoid arthritis that uh, kind of changed my life, I believe, in a great way. I see it as a gift now. So thankful for it. It, uh, it showed up in my life and made me really re reevaluate my life and what was important to me. And, and actually, when I was at my worst, I kind of got this, uh, I, I, had a, I had a thought. My one thought was, if this is the way my life is going to be, I'm ready to like be done with it. Cause I just actually felt like I had no future to look forward to because I was going to be disabled and not be able to do all the things that I wanted. And I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't suicidal, but that was just how I felt in that moment. And then the next moment I had another thought and I think it was a download. It was sort of like a voice that was saying, but it was in my head saying, you're going to figure this out and then you're going to teach other people. And so I was still in a lot of pain. You know, I could hardly walk. I couldn't, I had no grip strength, nothing. I was, I wasn't sleeping because I was in so much pain, but I, I knew after that moment, it was like, I just knew I was going to figure this out. And so I started like, you know, with my engineering skills, like problem solving and graphing and charting and doing all that stuff. And that took me pretty far. And I discovered functional medicine and I learned a bit more, but it was really, you know, I would get better and I plateau and I would get better again. And then I plateau again. And I was like, there's something I'm missing. There's something I'm missing. And I really had to kind of surrender that engineer side of me, the do, 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 go, go, and really kind of let that go and trust, trust in my body, trust uh, that all of this was happening for me, that it was a gift for me and to see the gifts in it and then go from there. So I'll, I'll leave it there for now. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm very emotional at your story. Um, <laughs> I, I, I see myself in your story and at a different spot. <clears throat> okay. Not supposed <laughs> to cry on my own podcast, but, um, usually you know, it's when, me crying. <laughs> right. This is very interesting. I'm just observing right now that this is really striking an emotional chord with me. And I think it's because I'm closer to that part of my journey than you are. So you're further removed from that part of you that said, I don't know what my life is going to look at, look like if I am going to be disabled and in chronic pain and not able to work, which that's very close to me. That was, you know, not even eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And then to just be able to see the person that you are today and how far you've come, it definitely gives me hope. And like you, it's not that I wanted my life to be over. I just was like, what does this mean? If like, I can't do any of the things that I love anymore. I can't be of service in the way that I want to be anymore. What does life look like? And another thing that really like grabbed my heartstrings is you had to let go of your engineer personality and that part <laughs> of you to really go deep into this. And I am working on that right now, like letting go of you know, something that I've done for 17 years and like really going forward in this. So, so anyway, the podcast is not supposed to be about me, Jane, but <laughs> it can totally be about you. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's kind of like, and I, I wonder if you felt this, that you kind of know, like my life is not meant to be like this. It's not meant to be like this. I, I know it's not, but surrender is so hard for us to do. We're not really taught how to surrender. We're not taught uh, the gifts in surrender. So, and especially I, I feel like in a whole, the whole engineering sciencey thing, it was just, you know, surrender doesn't really go together, but actually now I know that it really does. And what I see in the science, I say leading edge science. So like the neuroscience and quantum physics and um, 
you know, these new science, epigenetics, these yeah. new sciences are telling us that they're actually kind of bringing us closer to spirituality. I feel like it, they're proving these ancient spiritual practices that have been around for thousands and thousands of years. They're proving that it is, it, it matches the science. So, and the science is not as like, cut and dry as as it was like quantum science <laughs> quantum physics it's not it's all about things can change things are very changeable depending on the observer which is us yeah right what the observer is thinking and feeling and then we can actually change um uh, change our reality it's quite fun <laughs> it is quite <laughs> it is and i i was just curious because you are a woman a gen x woman who became an engineer so how, I mean, you must have been one of the only women in your, in your class. Like how did engineer become your career in the first place? Okay. So this, this is interesting because part of what I realized I had to look at was how I thought about myself and how I was, how, I, who I was in this world. So I was a people pleaser and a perfectionist had to do all whatever people thought I should do. So my father was an engineer. So guess what? I'm an engineer. My older sister is an engineer. So yeah, I went into engineering because my father said, you're doing engineering. And so I was like, you know, wanted to be the good girl and did engineering. And I did like it and I was good at it. Um, but really what I found was and why I decided to leave the careers, it wasn't my soul's calling. You know, like I didn't feel like it was my soul's calling to be designing structures. And I mean, my little joke is I was designing structures until my own structure started to fail. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it has all come together, but it wasn't, it wasn't calling my soul. Whereas now, like the work that I do now, I just feel like, well, I, it was a calling from my soul. It was that download that said, you're going to share. So that's why. That's why I go on podcasts. That's why an introvert like me is talking to people and sharing my story. I want to give people hope. I want people to see that they can be creators of their own health because they can. It's true. If you look up rheumatoid arthritis, it's dismal, right? You start Googling it. Like people don't have hope. I can tell you. I, I happen to find a couple of stories of other people that had healed naturally. And so I like you know, clung on to those. And then I, I, that's why I write about it. I want other people, people to be able to find these stories of hope because it, we can change it. We can change it. People think they can't, people think there's no hope, but you can't. I've reversed my symptoms. I don't have pain anymore. I, you know, it, it really doesn't have to be what you may hear from your doctor that it has to be. You'll hear that there's, uh, you know, you'll learn to live with it. You'll hear that there's no cure. And the only solu- the only treatment we have, it's not a cure is, you know, drugs that have very bad side effects. I was more afraid of the side effects than the pain, actually. Um, so but you know, once I started on doing some small things that really made a difference, I, it totally changed me to being in a place of empower- empowerment being the one in charge instead of being the victim. Mm. So good. So good. uh, Something you said too, that I thought bears repeating is that you were really good at being an engineer, right? You were doing that well, but it wasn't your soul's calling and having grown up in the same generation, right? This Gen X of like, this perfectionism, this doing things really well, this getting good grades, this high achieving, you know, and it, this letting go of the fact that just because you can do something really well, doesn't mean you should be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a hard one. It's hard to Mm -hmm. leave the safety, right? You know, we, we've really been wired for safety. We're naturally wired for safety. So to leave a career that, you know, I put 30 years into and, uh, and the safety of a job to, you know, 
to go out there and start talking about my health and be a health coach. I mean, I it I had to learn how to be an entrepreneur. I knew I didn't want to just work for some someone else and coach people one on one, although I did do coaching one on one. But I wanted to do I, I knew I had to like have a bigger uh, a bigger voice. And uh, so I've been working on that. You know, that's that's really what's behind everything that I'm doing. And uh, my, my, my word for this year, my, or my theme for this year is joyful expression. Cause I just, mm-hmm. I want to be, put that out there so much more just, you know, not even just in speaking, but also writing, as you know, like we're mm-hmm. both working on a book, like that's what I want to do, express it and put it out there this year. Speaking of joyful expression, tell me what motivated you to start doing cold dipping because let's just, <laughs> let's set up the situation. So I do my cold dipping over here on Vancouver Island. Generally, the temperature outside is not below zero degrees Celsius and the water temperature hovers, you know, four, five, six degrees Celsius. Okay. So it's cold dipping. It's uncomfortable. It's bearable. (laughs) You, on the other hand, tell me a little bit about your cold dipping situation and what got you into it. Because I think you're amazing. (laughs) Well, thank you. I think you're pretty amazing. You're going in the ocean. Um, I live close. I live close to a river, and uh, so in my community, every New Year's Day, a local friend would host a you know polar dip. So I'd done that several times. You know, like like running, you know, run out again, and you know that would kind of be it. And then um, I. I guess when I, I've done so much reading, I have read way more about healing and health than I ever did for my engineering degree. It's so funny. (laughs) I studied, it's been, I did six years in engineering. I've done six years now since my health, since rheumatoid arthritis. And I'd like read way more books. Anyway, one of the things I had read about was about the benefits of cold therapy, like having a cold shower. So I started doing that. I started turning my shower to cold at the end and, you know, like, ooh, standing there. Yeah, it's it's nasty, but you know. <laughs> and uh, so one time, uh, a couple of years ago, my daughter and her partner had were here staying with us for the winter, and they decided that they were going to do a week of cold, like going in the river, dipping every day for a week. So I, I thought, well, I'll do that with them. So we start, we did that. We did that for a week, and then they left, and I thought I'm going to continue on. So I kind of went once in a while. But then I, it's sort of, you know, I didn't have anyone that I was going with and it sort of, I didn't have a commitment. So when 2022 came, I decided I was going to publicly commit to doing a 52 dips in 52 weeks. So one dip a week for the year. And that accountability, like that's just who I am. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. It's like, I can't, I don't go back on it. Right. I'm just mm-hmm. really good at that. It's one of my strong points. And so I did, I did it every week for the year in 2022. And then I thought, okay, 2023 is coming. I, I don't have to commit again, you know, and I, oh, I should say loved it. Like hated it before, every time before I go to get in, I like my stomach, you know, butterflies, like, why am I doing this? And why did I commit to this? But I know that I always feel good afterwards. Mm-hmm. I've read Vim Hof. I know that he's used cold water therapy and breath work yeah. to treat people with rheumatoid arthritis. Also, like, there's so many benefits, as you know, there's elevated mood, it, it helps keep you warmer because of the brown fat on your back gets activated with all of the um, mitochondria that's in there. They produce energy. Uh, So your metabolism goes up as well. It's a a benefit for the immune system. Uh, I mean, there's just so many things. I always feel good. And also just, you know, I can do hard things. Yeah. I'm, I can, if I can get in that cold water, I can speak to people on podcasts. I can write a book, right? You know, so when you do, when you get out of your comfort zone in one area of your life, you can get out of your comfort zone in other areas of your life. So anyway, back to 2023 and what I was going to do, I didn't really know. I thought I'm just going to dip once in a while and I don't really need to tell anyone about it. I can just do it. But then my husband decided, I I did actually 52 plus one for good measure in 2022. (laughs) My husband got in on that last one. And now he was always behind the camera. He never got in the water and he kept on saying, no, I'm never getting in. But he got in and so now he wants to go. So now two of us are going in. We set up the camera on a tripod (laughs) and two of us get in and he's really enjoying it as well. So, I mean, we're not committed to every single week. Like if 
if it's a horrible snowstormy weekend, okay, we're not going to go. Or there's ice in the river. Or there's ice. Yeah, there was <laughs> ice there. So you couldn't went, get in? Yeah, we went down a couple of weeks ago. And there was... Do you know how cold the water is where you are? I I don't know. It doesn't... It's a, It t- typically doesn't freeze over because it's a moving... It's a big right. river, but the Humber River. It's still quite cold. But there's, you know, often ice. <laughs> uh, and the other day wow. we went down and it was just cold enough that the ice on the surface was freezing like in a really thin layer and it was sharp. It was really sharp. Oh so my gosh. just to get out there yeah. felt a little bit dangerous. And we had another person who wanted to go with us that day. And I just felt like I didn't really want to be responsible for them possibly getting cut. <laughs> so, so we didn't go that day, but we did go another day. But yeah, there's ice often on the, on the shore in the wintertime. In the summertime, gosh, I mean, I used to think it was cold before, but in the summertime now, it's like, oh, this is refreshing. I can't wait to go down. Yeah, exactly. It's, I love this. Also, I'm like you in that way that I find making a commitment to, to something, especially publicly, I'll follow through with it. My commitment was private to myself. Um, it was September of 2021. And I said, I'm going to commit to going in once a week for a year. And often I would go in, I was going in twice a week, pretty regularly all through that whole year. And then I just sort of kept going. In January, I went in a lot because it was warm here. Like it was a five, six, seven degrees, which so when you get out of the water, it's like it's not that uncomfortable. And so I went in a lot. And for me, the number one thing for sure is for my mental health. And I look back to last winter, uh, some of the videos that I have and how much my mental health was in a really much more dark place, I guess, than it is this year, even though I've been through all this chronic pain discovery and not working and all these things with my mental health. I think for me, that's always been the biggest benefit of the cold dipping. And I love hearing your story too, because, you know, I just want to mention if anybody's planning to do this, first of all, please do not do this alone. If you've never done this before, make sure you go with someone who has experience and knows the conditions and the tide. And like you said, the ice, it can be really dangerous if you go by yourself. And, um, but there's not a ton of risk. There are risks. Oh, also, if you have a heart condition, please don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> so caveat. That's probably the biggest risk is, but for the rest of us, it is generally a safe activity. So maybe mm-hmm. we'll inspire someone to find a friend to try a little cold dipping. Yeah. I mean, it, it there, you're right. There's not a lot of risk, heart condition, you know, it's a shock, right? It's a shock to the system. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's that hormesis kind of stress, right? Where we're, it's like I kind of uh, compare it to army training. So when people go into boot camp, you know, mm-hmm. the, the weak members kind of don't make it, right? Yeah. And so, but then the 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 rest of the army is stronger because of that, because it's a stronger. So it's kind of like us, like the weak cells will die off, right, and we'll be left stronger afterwards. I really feel like that. I, I I don't know if it's because of the cold dipping. I'm saying it, but I have not had COVID yet. And I have been like very exposed to COVID, people who had wow. COVID. And I haven't got it yet. And I've traveled. I traveled a lot in 2022, never picked it up. So I don't know. I, don't, wow. I can't say really yeah. I mean, it's part of your lifestyle. So, you know, like, and you live wellness as a lifestyle. So I'm just, I'm happy to hear that you have not gotten it yet. Neither have myself or my family. So maybe it's the cold dipping. Maybe it's the cold dipping or the fact that we don't do very much. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're kind of like that, but I did travel. Like I said, I I shared a room with the two other people had COVID Wow, as, as it turned out afterwards and I never got it. And I was next sitting next to someone all day in a conference. And I found out she had COVID just a positive the next wow. day and I never got it. So I don't know. I'm who, who knows, but who you knows? know, here's what I say to people is if you're going to try cold immersion or cold dipping or even the cold shower thing, it I'll, don't be banking on a benefit. Here's the thing. You don't know how it's going to benefit you personally. And you may not even discover that until months later. So do it because you want to do it and you want to try it, but not saying, oh, I'm doing it because I know my immune system is getting stronger. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but do it because you actually want to try it. You want to challenge yourself and let whatever beautiful 
side effects, right? Compared to what you were saying about how you were so scared of the side effects of the drugs that you were supposed to take for rheumatoid arthritis, it's a big difference. The side effects of cold dipping in general are really good. And most people that I know do say, you know, it's that feeling of I've done something really hard and it just, it does bring more joy into my life for sure. So speaking of joy in your life, uh, Jane, tell me a little bit about how gratitude fits into your lifestyle. What kind of practices you have, just the connection between gratitude and some of the way that you live and you work. I, I've kind of been into gratitude for a while, <laughs> long before the RA came along. Uh, I remember like when I was feeling sort of down about like well, my work or anything, I would make a grat, like all the things I'm grateful for about my job, all the things I, I'm grateful for with my husband, all the things I'm grateful for from me, like about me, right? I would make these lists and so that I could go back to them and really feel good. Like it, it would just help me feel good. So I, I had been doing that for years anyway. And uh, kind of, I don't know if I had a daily gratitude practice back then. But then I started learning again with all my research, the power of gratitude and how it immediately puts you into the rest and digest the parasympathetic state of the nervous system. Because when you are in a state of gratitude, you cannot be in a state of fear. They just, you know, it doesn't work two of them together. And so fear is the sympathetic state of the nervous system, right? Where things are breaking down because the body thinks it's got to be run for its life. So it's like really only focusing on raise your respiration, raise the heart rate and send blood to the big muscles. Um, so what that you can't heal in that state. So I was just, when I was trying to heal myself, it was all about, how do I get in that healing state as much as possible? So having feelings of gratitude is is one way to do that. So, and then I, I think I had learned about, um, I don't, I'm not a big follower of the law, uh, the, uh, what's her name? The uh, Esther Hicks, uh, you know, that all of that stuff. But I remember hearing about her doing this uh, uh, rampage of gratitude and I love that. Like, just look all around you and say, I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for this person. And just kind of this, just feeling so grateful for everything around you. So, so I'd had that, but I uh, started, my husband and I started doing a daily like meditation and yoga together. And when we finish it now every day, I just got this little routine, but I try to make it not feel rote, like really feel into it. And it's sort of like, I'm so, this is it. I am so grateful for this day, for my health and well-being, for my loving relationships, for the meaningful work that I'm in love with, and the time and money freedom to be, do, and have whatever I desire. And I say, I try to say that with the feel, like the feelings that go along with that. We say that together. And so to have this gratitude practice together, and sometimes it'll kind of run into a little story about something that's happened to us recently. And I just love this practice. And then the other thing I do pretty much regularly is when I go to bed at night, I think of it, I say, I, I got to think of at least three things that happened today that I'm grateful for. And it hardly ever stops at three. It's just like, you know, it just keeps on going. Oh, and then there was that. And then there was that. So yeah, I think when we can wake up with gratitude, <laughs> that's your book, and also go to sleep with gratitude, and then have moments throughout the day when we can feel gratitude. Well, we're, we're going to sleep better, we're going to feel better. And the more we can do it, we can get ourselves into that healing state as well, which is what it's all about. That's what I teach. Oh, I love that. Thank you for sharing that beautiful practice with us. I love using a mantra. It's one of the things I teach is finding a mantra that resonates with you. And you can repeat it every day and with feeling. It doesn't have to change all the time. So I do a similar thing. I have a mantra as well. So yours is so beautiful. I love it so much. And um, I just love too that you have the shared gratitude connection with your husband. You know, there is gratitude is important as a personal practice and gratitude expect, expressed to others is also the part of the gratitude journey that I think is really important is just really expressing ourselves to others and being grateful and just 
having your partner to share it with, yeah. that's a great place to start every day with, with your gratitude. Oh, and another thing that yeah. I teach, uh, so I teach this in my programs is, is gen, I call it generative gratitude. So, or future gratitude. So it's having gratitude for the person you want to be before you're there yet. So it kind of goes with visioning. So your vision, what you, where you want to be. So when I was like at my worst, I would vision, envision like hoisting up the sails on a sailboat and being out there, feeling the wind in my hair and the salt spray in my face. And I love sailing. So uh, there was that. And then I would also picture like climbing up a mountain and just, you know, being at the top and that exhilaration and uh and playing with my grandchildren who I don't have yet but I'd be like imagine throwing them up in the air and catching them again and so I would like take these visions and just feel gratitude for these feet like the future gratitude right so what hasn't happened yet feeling grateful for it now yeah even though it hasn't happened and so that's tied in with quantum physics gratitude feelings are a vibration yeah body. So when we feel, when we create that vibration, then we're like a vibrational match for that to come back, come to us and meet us. Right. But if we're like, it's, if we're on channel, channel seven, we're not going to get channel 11. Right. So we have to be a vibrational match for channel 11 for, you know, to, to match up with it and to bring it into our lives. I love that you just shared it in that way because I often will share about being grateful in the present for something that has yet to manifest on the physical plane. Yeah. What's different about what you just shared is you're doing the be part of be, do, and have. Who am, who do I want to be? Yeah. Right. In order to do, and then to have. And I love that you brought it back to the vision of myself, my future self. And I'm going to adopt that. I, I, Jane, this to me, this is why this podcast is something that I keep doing because I have interviewed, you know, more than 130 or so guests. And every single time I learn something new about gratitude. And you would think after all of these people, the same and sure, similarly, similarities come up, but yeah. you just shared something in a way that I haven't heard before. And I love that. So thank you. That was perfect. Jane, I I just have loved our time together so much. And I want to invite our listeners to connect with you. Where is the best place to connect with you or find you online? My website is thewellnessengineer.com. I have a YouTube channel. I have a Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you can search a wellness engineer or Jane Hogan Health. Um, I have my podcast, Wellness by Design. So, and you're going to be a guest on Wellness by Design as well. Um, yeah, so those are great places to find me. Um, my programs. Yeah, that's, I think that's good. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Well, I look forward to putting all the relevant links into our show notes so that people can connect with you directly. Jean, is there anything you want to leave us with before we wrap things up for today? I just want to say thank you to you, Julie. You're you're such a beautiful light in this world. And I mean, knowing the power of gratitude for someone to really devote like all of what you're doing to to gratitude, I think that's such a beautiful thing. So thank you so much for what you're doing. Oh, it's like you. I think it's my soul's work and I'm ready to embrace it even more. So Awesome. Thank you so much, Jane, for being a guest today. And I just, I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the podcast. I appreciate you. If you're not already following us on your favorite app, make sure you click on the check or follow podcast. So you'll be alerted every time there's a new podcast episode. If you enjoyed the episode and want to help us grow, here's some easy things that you can do. You can leave a review on your favorite app, You can share this podcast with a friend and send it directly, and you can also share through social media. Feel free to tag me on any posts in your stories, and I'll repost. Thank you to Paul Tedeschini for doing the post-production audio for the podcast. And one last thing, I hope you're choosing to wake up with gratitude every single day.